And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the Grim Masquerade from Druid City Games and Skybound Games. Now, this is a game, just as a heads up, this is a game that we did do a paid playthrough through this game. Uh, but after we were done, and I played it more, and I really liked it, so I want to come back and do a review of it. I just want you to know the information going in. The Grim Masquerade, Sky, uh, Druid City kind of has this, hey, we own fairy tales outlook. Not really, but they have very successful games based in this universe, and I don't mind that. I like the fairy tale universe, kind of a mix of Grimm's fairy tales and uh, Hans uh, Christian Andersen and, you know, the Disney-esque kind of viewpoint that's on those. This game is a social deduction style game where you are trying to figure out who someone else is. Everyone's coming and you're hidden behind masks and a masquerade or whatever. I don't know how the beast is hiding, but no matter. Um, you're trying to figure out who other people are. Well, there's a lot of social deduction games out there. This one's different than that. There's not really any lying per se. It's just playing cards in front of other people and trying to figure out who they are. It's also really fast and it also works well with a small number of players. This is a two to five player game here. Um, and most social deduction games are more than that. And I, mean, I even hesitate to call this a social deduction game. Uh, let, me, let me show you how it plays. A game takes three rounds. There are eight different characters in the game. There's Cinderella, Red Riding Hood, Rumpelstiltskin, Sleeping Beauty, The Beast, Hansel, Big Bad Wolf, and the Evil Queen. In each of the rounds, you'll shuffle eight character cards. Each player will get one, and that is the character that you secretly are. Each character has two artifacts that are listed on them. One of these artifacts is your Bane artifact. You don't want to get that artifact. And the other is your Boon. You do want to collect that artifact. Each player is going to draw. And from the beginning, you're going to have some cards in the middle of the table. You'll pick one of the artifacts there, and you'll start with that face up in front of you. Each round of the game, this point to finger action will be available. Available. There are six other actions. Two of them will be randomly placed up face up next to that action. When the game begins, each round on a player's turn, they will draw the top artifact card. Here I got the crown. I will decide whether to keep that for myself or to give it to another player. So I'll give this to Susan. And that goes face up in front of her. I then draw another artifact and I must do the opposite of that. So since I gave it away, I must keep the next one, which is a mirror, and place it in front of myself. Now, i got to be careful because you don't want to get the cards that are your bane. If you draw two cards and they are your bane and they're put in front of you, whether you put it there or somebody else puts it there, let's say I was a little Red Riding Hood, then I would expose myself. I would reveal and say, yes, I am a little Red Riding Hood. And I would put a mirror, a broken mirror piece over here. And I can keep playing over the course of the round, but now I'm just drawing an artifact, adding it to my hand, and putting one in front of somebody else. Trying to mess up other people because when you do that to somebody else, you get a rose token, which is worth a point. If I ever get three tokens of my boon type, so let's say I get three disguise cards here, and I am the big bad wolf, who that's their boon, then I automatically win that round. So that's fantastic. And in round one, I'll get one rose, three roses, and five roses in round three. And the round will instantly end, and you go to the next round. If I get two disguises, and I am not Red Riding Hood, then I will take a token of my color and place it on Red Riding Hood to show that I am not Red Riding Hood. It's obvious I have two disguises in front of me and I didn't bust. The same thing if I get three and I don't automatically win, then I would put a token on Big Bad Wolf to show that I am not him either. So if I get two treats and I'm not Hansel, then I'll put a token on Hansel and you can see narrowing it down to who you are. So players are going to take a card, give it to someone else, and take one and keep it for themselves in either order. Then, they optionally, if they have two artifacts of the same type, they can discard those to take an action. They can point the finger, pick someone else and say, all right, Sam, you're Sleeping Beauty. If I'm correct, I will get a rose. Also, Sam will be out of that round, and I'll get a rose for making him go out. So you basically get two roses. If I'm, if I'm incorrect and Sam isn't Sleeping Beauty, then Sam gets a rose. You also can do the other actions here. So for example here I can pick two players 
Uh, one or two players, and each one must put a marker out on the board showing someone who they are not. Or here, I can look at one of the unused character cards. Ooh. And then draw an artifact and keep it or give it away. I can choose an artifact. Everyone passes it left to right. Draw two and give them to other people. Look at two unused character cards and shuffle them back in the deck. Choose an artifact to give somebody and they have to give me two back. So the, every, each round's going to go until there's only one person left. Everyone else has been eliminated with mirrors and taken out of the round. And then you'll win that round getting this rose here. Or if you get the three tokens that are your boon, that will also end a round. Then you go to the next round. After three rounds, or if someone gets ten roses, they instantly win. Or after three rounds, whoever has the most roses is the winner of the game. There's also a few other rules in the game. If you want to play with a two-player, there's a two-player variant where each person has two cards. You can also play with the wager cards. There's a wager card, one for each character. And when you're unmasked, eliminated from a round, you can pick one of these cards. And if that person wins, then you will get points. You can even bet on yourself sometimes. But the only way to bet on yourself is if there's a new action card where you can take a wager card of someone who you think will win. So you can basically double your rewards if you win win that round. So you can win also if you pick the right person who has won. You can also use treasures. You can keep one of these treasure tokens each round and you can use it and combine it with an artifact to do an action. So you get basically, as long as you have an artifact, you get a free action each round. And then there are special abilities. These are cards that whoever has the fewest roses at the beginning of a round will take the special ability of the character they had last round. So for example, if I was the Evil Queen, when I give someone a mirror or a crown, they have to put out an evidence marker. When I give someone a disguise or treats, I can look at a random card. If I guess incorrectly, when I point the finger, I can draw an artifact and keep it or give it away. So there, here, take if you collect six unique artifacts, you win if you were Sleeping Beauty last round. So there's some interesting things that can be done here, but you only get these if you were the have the lowest roses going into the next round. So those are the kind of variants that you can add. Uh, you can play with or without them when you're playing a game. So there's lots of tokens in this game. We got rose tokens and you got player tokens, which are just brightly colored pieces and work well on this dark board. The artwork for this game is fantastic. Look at that artwork. I really like it. I'm a big fan of the fairy tale scene anyway, and this looks really well done. These are a little darker maybe than I would prefer, the different items, but they still work in theming with the game. Maybe my biggest complaint about the game is that I wish it almost had come with sleeves. You are going to have to sleeve these big character cards. You use them so much and they're just going to get nicked and things as time goes by. So just look for tarot card size sleeves and they will work. But that's my only negative thing about the game component wise. It is an absolutely beautiful game. Doesn't take up a lot of space. Fits easily in a box. Just excellently produced. I really like Grim Masquerade. I like the theming, I like the components, but mostly I like the gameplay. There's some trickiness to it, right? The very first time I played, I was like, I'm going to take an artifact that is my bane. And then when someone, you know, no one will ever think I would do that. But that's dangerous, because someone else might go, ah, I'll give you a second one just to see what happens. Because when you give someone a second artifact, you are possibly eliminating them. More than likely, though, eliminating a character they could be. So it's not a bad thing to do it, except that you do give them the opportunity to take an action. The actions are pretty simple, and sometimes you're just going to go down for a gut. This is more not so much social deduction, in my mind, as it is just deduction, like clue, like a light version of that. But it's fun. It's entertaining to try to figure out who people is. It's a very light game. It's a very fast game. I prefer to play it with everything. The wager cards, the special power cards, the treasures, because that just adds a little bit more room to the game. Now, you don't need to do that if you're playing with people who've never played before. I would play just the base game, but the wagers are fun because it is, those are fun because if you are eliminated quickly, maybe someone gets a lucky guess, whatever, you're out. Now, you're not out of the round. You can still try to eliminate other people, and I think that's good. There's no real player elimination here, but those wager cards also like, well, I think, I think Z is... 
you know, the evil queen, or I think Sarah is the beast. And so I'm going to bet on that person to win. And I like that idea. I also like the special power. You're not doing so well. Well, you know what? Now you got a special power. You can come back. And because of the ramping up nature of the roses giving, one in round three, three in one in round one, two, three in round two, and five in round three, you can be losing and come back and win, which might frustrate me more. But again, 30 minute game. It says 20 to 40 minutes on the box. It's really a quick, simple game, but it's the kind of game that they should be selling at Walmart slash Target slash whatever toy stores exist anymore. It should be sold there. This is the kind of game that can be brought to a family gathering, but it's the kind of game that me as a gamer, I'll play it too. That's a good combo. I wish more of these games existed. I like the theme. I like the gameplay. It's fast. It's simple. Let you do a little bit of deduction. Doesn't really task your brain. Has a bit of a <laughs> I knew that's who you were moments. Just simple fun. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Tale as old as time.